FAME's technology adds another level of ion separation to your mass spectrometer, increasing the quality of your data. Thermo Fisher Scientific's advances in both hardware and software are designed for straightforward installation and optimization of FAMES. To install FAMES on your MS instrument, first remove the ion source. Next, remove the sweep cone. Then check the placement of the large O-ring on the back of the FAMES unit. Put the main control box, or MCB, on top of the instrument. Install the signal connector. High voltage connector. Cooling gas line. FAMES carrier gas line. Nitrogen input line. Ethernet connector and power cable into the back of the main control box. Install the FAMES housing adapter onto the front of the mass spectrometer. Push against the top and the middle part of the housing adapter to make it sit flush with the instrument. Next, perform a leak check to ensure that the electrode assembly is sealed properly, as a leak might impact ion transmission. To do this, place a gloved finger over the orifice on the entrance plate. Use caution, as the entrance plate can be hot if FAMES has been in use. The source pressure should drop below 0.2 torr on Orbitrap tribrids and TSQs, or below 0.3 millibar on the Explorus series. If the pressure remains over the threshold, disassemble the electrodes, check the O-rings, and reassemble. Both FAMES Pro and FAMES Pro Duo can be used for both low and high flow applications. However, when using the FAMES Pro interface in high flow applications, an upgrade kit needs to be installed. This kit includes the electrode assembly, the upper FAMES drain part, two screws to attach the upper drain part, a 2 mm hex key, and the lower FAMES drain part. Use the two supplied screws and 2 mm hex key to attach the upper FAMES drain part to the electrode assembly. Remove the sprayer before removing the drain insert. You can then lift out the original lower drain part and replace it with the lower fame drain part. Remove the FAMES Pro from the MS and place the housing adapter module on a flat surface with the electrode assembly facing up. Remove the electrode assembly from the FAMES Pro to gain easier access to the drain ring. Insert the small flathead screwdriver between the drain ring and the housing adapter and gently pry the drain ring from the housing adapter. Then place the O-ring on the bottom of the FAMES Pro Duo drain ring. Align the FAMES Pro Duo drain ring with the housing adapter such that the bottom side of the O-ring faces down towards the RF box. Push the drain ring in place until it sits flush with the housing adapter. After reassembling the FAMES Pro and reinstalling the sprayer, install the ion source and run the Tune DV procedure. Running Tune DV is needed after FAMES installation, when the source housing is exchanged, or when the electrode assembly is removed or cleaned. Tune DVRF is located under the Diagnostics tab in the interface. This process adjusts the input parameters to create a stable and consistent waveform output. FAMES technology uses an asymmetric waveform to affect ion mobility. The FAMES waveform, shown here in dark blue, is produced by combining two sine waves, one with a high electric field amplitude of 1.67 kV at 3 MHz, shown in blue, and the other 90 degrees out of phase, 
with a low electric field amplitude of 3.33 kilovolts at 1.5 megahertz, shown in green. The resulting waveform is asymmetric, 2.5 kilovolts to negative 5.0 kilovolts. The DV is the maximum amplitude of the high field component of the waveform. Every RF circuit has an ideal resonance that doesn't waste power. High field RF tuning determines the high field frequency that corresponds to the minimum output power. The high field coarse tuning scans the frequency range to find the minimum output current, shown here as the black dashed line, and the maximum amplitude, shown as the red dashed line. The high field fine tuning procedure sweeps the frequency between the boundaries determined by the coarse tuning. The frequency is fine tuned to the value that corresponds to the minimum output power, shown here as the red dashed line. Because of the nature of the asymmetric waveform FAMES uses, the low field frequency must be half of the high field frequency. The high field frequency varies for each system, so it's not possible to use a set value for the low frequency transformer. The low frequency is therefore adjusted by using a stepper motor to change the capacitance, which is used to bring the resonance of the low frequency transformer to exactly half of the high frequency for that particular system. The low field coarse tuning changes the capacitance to find the minimum output current, shown here as the black dashed line, and the maximum amplitude, shown as the red dashed line. The low field fine tuning procedure changes the capacitance between the boundaries determined by the coarse tuning. Capacitance is fine tuned to the value that corresponds to the minimum output power, shown as the red dashed line. Final DAC digital to analog converter values for the amplitude are determined to give the amplifier the set point. In this procedure, both low and high electrical fields are combined to produce the waveform in full amplitude. As the coils heat up, there might be a small change in inductance and therefore a small change in resonance frequency. The DV modulation DAC process compensates for this by adding more power as needed. Low and high field DAC regulation verifies the determined DAC value is within specification. The tuning process is now complete and you're ready to run your MS with FAMES. Maintenance is simple. The electrode unit is designed for easy, nearly tool-free assembly and disassembly. The electrodes can be cleaned by sonication and the only other parts that require cleaning are made of stainless steel. To disassemble and clean the electrodes, first remove the assembly from the FAMES device and let it cool down before taking it apart. If the medium-sized O-ring should come off at this stage, remove the housing adapter from the instrument, allow it to cool for 20 minutes, and then place the O-ring back into position. Note that the O-ring is intentionally oversized to give a good seal. Once they are cooled, the electrodes can be taken apart. The electrode assembly consists of an upper drain insert, an entrance plate, inner electrode, outer electrode, heater end cap, RF end cap, and two electrode bushings. If the medium sized O-ring on the entrance plate should come off with the electrode stack, simply place it back onto the entrance plate. However, if the small O-ring should fall from the end caps, they will need to be reinstalled. Please note that the O-rings that face the electrodes are a different size than the O-rings on the sides of the end caps. Once the electrode assembly has been disassembled, it can be cleaned. How often cleaning is necessary depends on the frequency of use and the sample type. One indication that cleaning is necessary is an increased frequency of DV dropouts. Cleaning every two weeks is adequate in most situations. 
Only Optima LC-MS grade materials should be used for cleaning. Prepare a 1% Liquinox solution in water. Wipe the inner and outer electrodes and upper drain using a foam-tipped swab, which has been dipped in the 1% Liquinox solution. These swabs can be ordered separately or as a component of a cleaning kit. Use separate beakers to sonicate the inner and outer electrodes and upper drain in 100% water for 10 minutes. Replace the water with 50-50 methanol and water and sonicate again for 10 minutes. Do not sonicate the entrance plate. To clean it, use a 50-50 mix of methanol and water with 10% formic acid to wipe its surfaces, followed by 100% methanol. The electrodes and entrance plate can be allowed to air dry on a lint-free cloth or dried with a stream of nitrogen gas of at least 99.5% purity. Once dry, the electrode assembly can be put back together, making sure the bushings are in their correct placements. Next, place the electrodes back on the FAMES unit. Remember that a leak check and DV tune need to be performed after reinstalling the electrode assembly. Once they're complete, you're ready to run more samples using FAMES. We hope this demonstration has been helpful. If you have any questions, please contact your Thermo Fisher Scientific Technical Service representative.